guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com, and this is one of several software tours for the HTC HD2. This device has the largest touch screen of any smartphone on the market. It also has a capacitive multi-touch display, which is the first for Windows Mobile. So in this video, we're gonna cover HTC Sense, which is really HTC's interface for this device, previously known as TouchFlow 3D, or Manila as some people know it. We've shown this to you a few times on the Touch Pro 2, but now with the Snapdragon processor and the final release of the HD2, we really get to see it in its full glory. So let's start, let's turn on the device. And this is just the standard Windows Mobile 6.5 lock screen, although they actually changed the icons a little bit. Um, we're gonna slide this over and zoom in on the screen and get started with the tour of HTC Sense. So starting off, we have the nice weather clock, which is on some newer HTC devices. If we tap on the clock, we're taken to the world clock. We can add multiple locations, or we can set the alarm clock, pretty basic stuff. If we tap on the picture of the, uh, the rain cloud, we'll be taken right to the weather tab. Now this device automatically knows where you are. So if you're traveling, it will automatically adjust the location, the time, the weather to exactly where you are. And you can also have many different backgrounds on the screen. So we can have the weather background. And to give you a demo of what that looks like, I can go down here to weather demo. And you'll see this appear behind um, the time and all of the things on your main screen. So you can flick through when it's raining. Nice big windshield wi wiper will come down. If it's snowing, you'll have frost on the screen. We've shown this to you before. You've probably seen it many times. And we'll just finish up here. If it's windy, leaves are flying by. So it really kind of immerses you in your environment, which is really unique for a smartphone. If it's snowing, you get the snowflakes. And finally, if it's thundering outside, you will get uh, some flashes of lightning on your screen. Pretty cool stuff. You can also change the wallpaper to be animated. Here's the setting for weather wallpaper, or we can just choose a static picture. Um, so we can choose, say this one, which we've probably seen before, and you'll see in a minute things start to fly around on the screen. If that's a little too distracting for you, you can get a static wallpaper, although oddly, it's not listed as static wallpaper. You have to go to animated wallpaper, and then you have to go to albums and all, and then we see all of the kind of static wallpaper. Let's choose uh, this simple brown one, and it will sort of fade in and look really nice. Going down the home screen, we have the calendar. So if we click on here, we will be taken to our calendar, actually the calendar tab um, on HTC Sense, and we're gonna cover that in more detail momentarily. Down here are some quick links, and these are really great because these can be either links to websites or links to programs or links to contacts. So here I have a contact that I like to call on a regular basis. I have the browser, and I have pocketnow.com, and it actually gives you a little thumbnail of the website, kind of like you get on the iPhone. Launching programs is super fast. You've probably seen that already, just moving around on the screen. Everything is extremely responsive. And as you see more software videos from us, you're really going to get a sense for that. So let's say we want to add a new uh, bookmark. This comes right from Opera Mobile. So I'm going to add Techno Buffalo. And you can see a little screenshot of the site there. Let's add a program. So you can really customize this to all of the programs you use the most, so you're not really digging through the start menu trying to find programs that you use on a regular basis. Let's see if there's anything else in here that we want to take a look at. We can remove the quick links if you don't want to have the calculator anymore, quite simply. And we can also change the weather settings and adjust the home screen tabs if we want to disable some of these tabs or move them around like so, although this was present in previous versions of TouchFlow 3D. So I'm going to hit cancel, and let's go on to the next tab. This is really cool. This is the People tab, and this is kind of a revamped version of what you had before in TouchFlow 3D. So instead of having kind of like a cover flow like contact tab, now it's just a grid, which is much easier to use. And what's really cool is that if you get an email from anyone here or a text message or an MMS, you'll get a little indicator. So right now I can see that I have a new email from Ilana. Tapping on that, I can go right to her integrated contacts tab, which lets me see her text messages, her emails, her Facebook status updates, and her calls, and I'm taken right to the email tab, a really convenient way to sort of be able to tell who is communicating with you out of the people that you communicate with on a regular basis. This can be great for business users or for people that really like to keep in touch. And if we go into menu, let's see what we can do here. We can add a favorite or just remove a favorite, or we can go to the all people tab, and we'll talk more about that in future videos. So the next tab, we have just the standard text messaging screen, and we can flick up and down. We've seen this before. And it takes you right into the message. So I'm going to go back. 
Going over to the email screen, now we get a bigger view of the emails that we have in the inbox. So as whereas before in TouchFlow 3D, you only got to see a few lines, now you get to see pretty much the entire top part of the message and tapping on the email will obviously bring it into its full screen glory. And you can switch between multiple accounts over here or make a new account or write a new message, I should say, by pressing on this button. Let's go over to the internet tab, which is kind of made to look like the contacts tab. So now they're all arranged in grids. And if you have any favorites that you want to add, it will save it as a little thumbnail, which is a very nice visual representation. You can quickly launch the browser by tapping on this icon, or you can get to a Google search by just typing in a query up here and pressing on on the, uh, the search button. We're gonna talk more about the internet experience, especially compared to other devices like the TouchPro 2 and the iPhone in future videos. Over here in the calendar tab is the completely revamped calendar application. So if we go to month, we're taken to this beautiful month display. We can go to next month or the previous month. Tapping on a day will bring up the agenda for that day. And we can kind of tap through to the different views that they have. This one's especially useful, the agenda view, so you can see sort of quickly in a linear fashion what you, what you need to be doing. If we go to menu, we have some extra views. We can go to the year view. And HTC has integrated this very well uh, with Windows Mobile. So if we go to menu and new appointment, we're taken into a beautiful looking uh, way to add a new appointment. It's not the standard Windows Mobile ugly interface. It's very much spruced up with this gray and the HTC styled buttons. So a very deep integration of the calendar. I'm going to hit cancel there and go to the next step. Stocks tab really hasn't been changed much since previous versions of TouchFlow 3D. So we're not going to cover that. And now we get into the really, really cool stuff. So ignore that picture of my feet. So here we are in photos and video. We've seen this before, but if we rotate the device into landscape, watch what happens. This is beautiful. We get into this beautiful landscape 3D photo gallery, and we're going to start talking about multi-touch in a minute, but let's get to a picture. Let's tap on this picture. It comes up. It fades up beautifully. We can pinch to zoom. Wow, it's very surprising to, to actually be doing that in a Windows mobile device. The pinch to zoom works fantastically well. It redraws the picture very quickly. We can swipe to go to the next picture. This is probably the best viewing experience for photos I've ever seen. The screen looks fantastic. It's very easy to be super precise precise with the pinching and the dragging. And tapping to double, double tapping to zoom also works. We can go to the right and see all of the beautiful pictures that are in here. And there are some options on all of the pictures. So if we tap here and we go to this one, we can save it as a screen image, save as a contact, delete it, set as a footprint, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Or here's a quick way to email it, send it as a message, or put it up on Facebook. Speaking of Facebook, let's get back to the, um, the portrait display. Let's take a look at the new photo album view. So if we go down to albums, and albums down here. We have a new tab here, F, for Facebook. If you're logged into Facebook, watch what you can do. This is just awesome. So here I have all of my Facebook friends, and I can view their photos as if they existed on my device. So let's just take anyone here. I'm gonna take myself. And here are all my photo albums, and I'm gonna click on Cruise to the Bahamas, and it's gonna load all of my photos from Facebook, so I or, or from this particular folder. So I'm gonna be able to tap on any of them, and bring it up just as if I was browsing it on my device. And I can pinch to zoom just like I had these stored on the device. It's really an amazing experience. Um, and it's really just a fantastic way to view photos. So let's get out of that. Tap on the screen. Great. Let's go to the next tab, the music tab, which has also been redesigned. So just like the photos tab, if I tilt the device this way, I'll get this gorgeous animation. Wow. This is, in my opinion, much nicer than what you get on the iPhone or iPod Touch. So we can browse through our music with this beautiful cover flow, the 3D reflection below. If we want to play some music, let's say we want to play this Weezer, we tap on there. Beverly Hills will start playing when I press the play button. I can go to the next song. I can hide it and browse through more music. It's really, a, it's really a fantastic way to listen to music and really experience it in a huge screen with very fluid graphics. Let's get back into Portrait. 
And there's some other things you can do up here. Um, there's a button here that will actually query for album art so that if you have some albums that don't have art associated with them yet, it will reach out to the internet and get them. There's some other buttons here up here. There are some other buttons up here as well, like repeat. And if we go into library, we are taken into the, um, the, the HTC Music library that we've seen on other devices. So you get full album art, or you can go to songs or genres, or just flick along the bottom in this touch flow 3D like display that we have seen before, but it's just especially fluid on the uh, HD2. I have no idea who this is. It came on the device, I promise. Okay, let's go over now to the weather tab. The weather tab is mostly unchanged from previous versions, except um, now there are easier ways to remove locations. So let, I have to first add a location before I can remove one. So let's type here Paris. And by the way, we're going to talk about the on-screen keyboard in future videos. Here's Paris, comes up very fast. And now let's say we want to remove Paris. Well, before we had to do it one by one. But now if we go to menu and we go remove location, we can uncheck. So pretend you have, you know, 10 locations that you've added. Or in my case, when I turned on the device for the first time, there were six or seven cities that I never visit. So I just went down the list, check, check, check. I hit done. And then I was only left with my home area right here. OK, so let's move to the next tab. This is the Twitter tab. This is HTC's inbuilt Twitter client, which eh, is okay. It's a little bit clunky. I much prefer to use a program like Tw TouchTwit or Tweakini. So I can go to all tweets, and that's really where you're going to spend most of your time. You can flick through all of your tweets, the last 50 tweets. You can change the setting. You can go into the at replies, so you can see all of your mentions recently. Your direct message is there, and your favorites are there. Now let's say you want to make a tweet. Then it gets kind of cool. So we tap up here, what are you doing? And we can add a photo, we can add our location, or just type out a quick t tweet. It's a very easy way to sort of not have to open up a Twitter client. You can do it all from really the main screen with HTC Sense. So of course, if I tap on a picture there, I can choose a picture to upload and it says uploading photo. It does it all in one step. Okay, and it has uploaded the photo, but I'm going to click back and not send out that tweet. So a pretty good Twitter client. There are some settings. If we go into settings, we can change how many tweets it should download, and by default, it's on 50. You can also change how often it downloads new tweets, and you can get to as low as five minutes if you are on Twitter a lot. You can also choose your URL shortening host and your photo host. So pretty good level of control. It's not as robust as other Twitter clients that I mentioned a few seconds ago. To the right, we have HTC footprints. And we've seen this before, but the graphics are amazing. Watch this. If I tap on this picture, this beautiful animation comes up. The idea of footprints is that if you travel a lot, you can take a picture of a monument you see or a restaurant you like. You could add geo coordinates to it so you can get back to that location. Plus, you can add some notes or a voice note. So for example, if I press the plus button, it's going to bring up the camera. And so I'll take a picture of the, of the HTC case here. Hold on one sec. OK, that wasn't the best picture. And it says GPS still searching because it's trying to reach out, get GPS coordinates. But I'm indoors, of course, right now. So I'm going to click Stop GPS Search. And by the way, there's some really cool stuff that this does with GPS and the digital compass. That's coming up in a future video. So I'm going to click Done and see what my footprint looks like. There it is. If I tap on it, it doesn't have much information, doesn't have a phone number or geo coordinates or a voice note or anything like that because I just set that up quickly. A good thing for travelers. And finally, on the right, we have settings. And we're not going to cover settings in this video because there's a lot of new settings. And I'm sure many of you want to see how the capacitive screen kind of interplays with the standard Windows mobile stuff. And we're going to show that soon. But that was just a look at the new HTC Sense, which does a fantastic job at really bringing the device to life and taking advantage of the 1 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon processor. So we have a lot more coming up on the HTC HD2. Be sure to follow us on Twitter to know right when the new video hits, twitter.com slash pocketnowtweets. That's it for now.